You know, the least you do for the master, it's precious in his sight. You know, today I just greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. You know, um, <laughs> on Thursday when I got the telephone call from Elder Gardner, well, I missed the call and I said, oh, Elder God, I want me to open up. So then I returned this call and he said, no, that's not what I want you to do. I said, oh my God, Elder God, you're letting me sweat right about now. But you know what I said? It would be a shame if I can't stand in the house of God to say, God's mercy has kept me. You know, um, I've been on this journey for a very, very long time. And it's only because of his grace and his mercy why I am here today, still standing in my right mind. And I just want you to help me sing this song, Mercy Rewrote My Life. <coughs> Mercy Rewrote My Life. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise Shall we bless the name of the Lord? Mercy Rewrote My Life. For when I should have fallen, and my soul cast down, but God's mercy rewrote my life. Today I thank God for his wonderful mercy. Had it not been for God's mercy, you and I would not be here today. We would not be even exist existed. But thanks be to God, who has looked beyond our falls and have seen our needs. And we give him praise today, we give him honor, we thank God that while he was on the cross, we were on his mind. You know, we got, without God's mercy, we could never seek his face. We could never say, Abba, Father. But in Ephesians 2, verse 4, Paul states that, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. So our God is rich in mercy. Mercy brings forgiveness. You know, even our best, very best, is not good enough to please God. In John 8, we all know the story of the woman who was caught in the act of adultery and was guilty of death, but God's mercy was extended to her. You know, many of us here today, we could testify of us being in a situation where mercy walked in and pleaded our case. You know, um, when God said to her to go and sin no more, you know, let us, let us not use mercy, God's mercy for an occasion to go sin because we know that his mercy is measureless. So let us not use his mercy to go and keep doing the same thing over and over again. God's mercy means that he does not treat us as our sin deserves. Where would we be had it not been for God's mercy? We would not have been woken up this morning. We are deserving of judgment, destruction, punishment, and condemnation. But God's mercy means that we can be forgiven. Amen. Paul reminds us in Hebrews 4 verse 16 that we should therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And let us always be ready to show mercy to our fellow brethren. You know, in Micah 6, verse 8, it says that, um, he, that sh he that he hath shewed thee, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. So if we love mercy, then we will know how to show mercy to our brother. Because, you know, sometimes things happen and we tend to, you know, not wanting to forgive the person, but just as how we need God's mercy in our everyday life, we have to show mercy. Um, yes. And, yes, praise the Lord. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Yes, I am. Yes, as I said before, um, let us not use mercy for an occasion, because in Romans 6 verse 1 it says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So that means when God has cleansed us from our sin, let us walk holy. Let us talk holy and let us show mercy. Our sin is great, but God's mercy is greater. 
Our sin is enormous, yet God's mercy is boundless. Our sin drives a wedge between ourselves and God, yet God's mercy is freely available to all who will call upon him today. Let us this day and every day give God praise for his measureless mercy. Bless the Lord. Amen. The reason I'm leaving this life, I don't want to be lost. We believe that he's going to prepare a home, a place for us. We believe that, that one day there'll be no more pain. One day there'll be no more need for light because he will be the light. You see on my hand here, even Linda and I, she was saying to me, Mom, go to the hospital. But you know what I realized? The devil will try any and anything. Mayday knows me too well. And they would love me to go. But guess what? I'm going to run to the throne of God first. And I said to Lyndon, and I said to them, and they got upset. They were with me till about 11 o'clock last night. I said, Lyndon, if I die, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because as long as you know that your calling and election is sure, it's all right. We all have to go. I want to ask us, how many have a will written out? Let me see, honey. Have you got your will? You don't have a will yet? Pastor, you have to go talk to them. Anybody have insurance? I insurance. You have insurance. You have insurance. Them not insure me now. When I tell them about the heart attack, when I tell them about the stroke, nobody insure me. But guess what? That's why I have to make sure that I enter into that city because man not giving me no insurance. You know, I was sharing with the um, sisters in the car that even my funeral service, which I'm really looking forward to, God, we prepare, no. I was showing it to Dean, so he knows where it is. And I, I had to change a couple of times because like I have people on it to do certain things. And I said, but suppose them dead before me, you know? So I thought, okay. But in it all, I had to prepare. prepare. And I'm saying that to say on our Christian pathway, one day when we got converted, when we knew Jesus, that wasn't enough. Because what the devil will do is constantly fight us. In our mind, he will fight any and anywhere. And we always, and thank God for Holy Ghost, because we don't have to wait for a whole year. We don't have to wait and just say, oh, you know, what? right there and then we can say, God, forgive me. And I thought about this preparation. We're on this road. And some of us may have death warrant sent out for us. The enemy sends out death warrant. Just like what they did to Moses. But you see, God had a plan. Some of them may don't like your gifting. They don't like your purpose. Because they see that God has a divine favor over you. Like Joseph. They will sell you. They will do something. But guess what? God intervenes. You may have to stand up like Esther and just take it. Stand up like Esther and said, what did she say? If I perish. Why? Because this world is not our own. We are just traveling through. And I'm thinking that God ought all these people in place. Moses, he was there to deliver God's people. Joseph was there. Everybody was there, but was still only for a time. They go back in the idolatry. But guess what? There is no satisfaction without salvation. S-A-L-V-A-T-I-O-M. There is no satisfaction without Salvation, S A L V A T. I am so glad for the plan of salvation. When man failed, God sent his own son that you and I have divine favor. You and I have divine purpose. And what I'm saying, when God blesses you and man don't even see it, Man don't want to acknowledge it. Why are you worrying about? Why are you worrying about it? God give all of us ministry, you know. All of us are ministers. He gives you a ministry. 
And if you and let me tell you, I run a, a charity called Ministry of Empowerment. And if them take it away from me, it don't matter because the ministry is in me. Yeah. You understand me? When if, if they take, if that's how you know if you have true ministry, you know. The ministry isn't here, Nine Station Road. It's a lifestyle. It's whatever God's put in you. And you impart to others. Why? To let them know that the Lord draw at nigh. Imagine, I tell you, God is so good. I'm so glad that even though when I got baptized, I didn't understand. Even though I got baptized because my friend, I needed my friend to speak to me. Because she wouldn't speak to me because I didn't get baptized when she got baptized. But then... I was so glad that conversion came. And when conversion came, you know that you know that you know. You know. And as I said today, I thank God for Sister Iacent. It doesn't matter what happened. She's still spreading the word. That's part of the body. That's a member. You have Sister Liz looking after the caring for the sick. That is something she's doing. You have each and every one of us. We have ministry. We better be active in it. We better be active because it's all part of the body of Christ. So, um, I want to read Thessalonians 5.5. 5. First, Thessalonians 5.5. 5. Ye are all the ch- you are all the children of light. And the children of the day, and we are not the children of the night, nor of darkness. What I'm saying, be true. If we are children of the light, walk as we are children of the light. We don't have to hide and wait if pastor, antiquity, or somebody sees us. Guess what? God sees And the thing about it, everything we do is recorded. We are children of the light. And do you understand how this great salvation is? It's wonderful. I'm wondering if I was in the time when uh, Moses' time and all that, maybe I wouldn't have understood. Because look at it now. They saw the Red Sea. They see all the miracles. Yet they still turn to idol. And sometimes we know Christ. And yet our way is not pleasing to the Lord. We don't give him full. What I'm saying today, brethren, that remember that we are children of the light. First um, Colossians 1, 13 says, Who has delivered us from the powers of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have what? What have we got? In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Brethren, I am glad that I know him for myself. I'm really, really glad. You know, a few days ago, I was getting myself concerned about the legacy of the church for the next generation because a lot of it, the legacy seems to be diminishing. I spoke to someone, they said it's gone. There was a time when we walked into the sanctuary we sanctify ourselves, we bow down. Before you even greet anybody, you kneel down and you thank God. You sanctify yourself. Is that right? There was a time we used to clap. We don't even bother clap no more. There's a time that we used to open our mouth and praise him. We only praise him when it sounds sweet. But I want us to leave a legacy, especially for the children, to let them know. And I've always said this to the ladies. When we're going through the problem, our children should be able to say, Whenever a problem happened, mom would get on our knees. You don't want to hear that, oh, mom did a ball. And no, 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 no. They need to see so that they know what to do when it comes to their problems. When they're having problems, they can refer back. I think there, who is it? Um, was it Timothy that was taught by his grandmother? What is grandmother? And then his mother and so forth. Legacy. And the church needs to have legacy. We need to bring back the whole values of the church. When we had the values of the church and the men of God could not read, was there no power? Was there no power? Holy Ghost taught them. Right? We need to bring back those values in the church. When the mothers would pray, yes, then things happen. Things happen. And I'm saying today, 
let us remember that we are just passing through. This world don't belong to us. And it's up to you if you decide to sleep or die. I decide to sleep in the Lord. I know if I die, then that's it. But when my time come, I just want to know that I'm sleeping. So that when that trump of God sounds, I will hear. Is that right? So brethren, when we walk, walk circumspectly. Walk as children of the light. Don't be double-minded. You know, I'm very, 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 you don't know how sensitive I am. People that can't tell truth, trust me, my spirit really gets upset. Really gets upset. And that's how we should get upset when we see sin. When we feel sin. When we hear sin. When we see sin. We have to. Why? Because the reason that we're living the life we're living is because I, Valerie, don't want to be lost. Many of us has been like Moses. You shouldn't have been here today, but God made a way. Some of you have been in prison, maybe even still in prison, but God is making a way for you. Some of you may, whatever the circumstances are, and don't let anybody devalue you. You remember Gideon? Gideon. Gideon, even though Gideon was hiding, and he was frightened. God gave him a name. Man of valor before he even showed his action. So we need people around us that can see potential in us. People around us that can say, stay over there. That cultivation is good for you. We have to pray. And I, again, I want to thank God for the gift and the ministry that we have in the church. It's hard. It's hard. Sometimes it's not acknowledged. It's not recognized. But Serve. You're not serving man, you're serving the Lord. And as long as you know that you're not doing it of self, the whole reason that we're doing it is because our duty is to tell others about the Lord, but secondly, to live a life that others can see that we are children of the light and not children of the darkness. So you continue to pray for me. And, you know, I am determined. And I know every time I say it, the enemy sort of says, watch it, you watch you know, that's all right. Again, I don't even know if the Lord is treating me like Job. Well, touch her. She not say nothing. She not do nothing. But either way, that God will give me the strength that I will continue to live a life that others will see Christ in me. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but the thing is, I'm striving because I believe that we have to be perfect. We have to be holy because God is holy and he's a holy God. So you continue pray one for another. And as I always say, whatever things that happens around us, and if you don't understand it, let us never criticize, but pray. Because the enemy is just waiting. He's just waiting. Today when I was in prize, like I saw in the door, different individuals coming through. Some may come through with different purpose, with a different motive. But thank God for the children of Zion. The children of Zion, you know, the enemy can never, never, never prevail. Let us continue to pray one for another. And remember the reason that we are living, I don't know about you, the reason I'm living this life is because I truly don't want to be lost. So the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God.